When you're dealing with bugs that are particularly hard to find, I recommend a process of elimination, especially if you have no clue where to start. But for this process to work, you need to know the components your software stack is composed of, otherwise you will not be able to find the problem. The process of elimination sounds simple in theory. Step by step you start to eliminate, you iterate across all the different components and you eliminate them one by one. Is the problem here? No. Move on to the next one. Is the problem here? No. Move on. But in practice it can be difficult to apply if you don't have tools or knowledge to test the specific component and often you end up skipping and trying somewhere else and jumping all over the place is not going to help you find the problem. In this video I propose a structured, methodical way of finding bugs and problems so that when you're stressed you have a clear process to fall back to. Let's get into it. Part 1. Your stack. To be able to use the process of elimination you need to know all the different components of your stack. If you cannot list them, if you don't have at least a reasonable overview of what all the high level components are, we have a front end here, we have a back end there, there's a database, there's some APIs that we call. If you can't name these large scale components then you're gonna have a difficult time. You can't really use the process of elimination if you have big knowledge gaps in the stack that you're working with. And the best solution then is to just find somebody who does know. Maybe you have an architect, a lead dev or a senior available that can paint a picture for you. Maybe you literally have documentation available. Maybe they can just point out some components. If you explain to them, I'm going to try to use the process of elimination to find this specific bug. Can you point out the things that are relevant for me right now? They'll often be able to help you. Once you have an overview of all the parts, you need to also know what component talks to what component. And there's, there's an arrow, if you look at it from an architecture diagram perspective, this front end calls that API, so there's an arrow to that way. So you know data is not going to flow the other way. This is a request in that way and a response in that way. So you can start inspecting this network traffic, for example. If you do have a good overview of your stack or you have good architecture diagrams or other documentation available, you're good to go. My recommendation is to pick one end of the data flow, the front end or the database all the way in the back end, and start at one end. And then you can proceed from there. Let's look at how to zoom into those components next. Part 2. Your methods. Now that you have a list of software components you can eliminate from, you need to decide per component how you're going to eliminate those parts. And this looks different for every part. Say you have a backend service, which calls an API. The smartest approach is to not inspect the internals just yet. Yes, I'm recommending to ignore the internals of both the service and the API for now. Instead, you should focus on the communication, the boundary between them. Because often when you look at the communication, the request or the response or whatever's happening, how the data flow is going, when you look at that part, you, when you look at the boundary, you'll realize is either one of them, but it can't be both. And that saves you the time of clearly, deeply spending time with the internals of those components. That saves you a lot of time. In this example, the communication between the service and the API can be an HTTP request, and it's also the HTTP response. HTTP consists of a header and a body, and there's ways to inspect both of them, and the metadata, like the time it, it took, is it too quick, is it too slow, what's going on there? But for this all to work, you need some HTTP knowledge. You need to be, you need to know about headers and, and authentication and the format of a body and request timings. And if you don't know all these things, then it can be more difficult to work with. Having the knowledge is very important on one hand. And on the other hand, you also need tools available. Sometimes Postman, because you can reproduce it locally, is very easy. But if you have a bug which you can only reproduce in production in a certain Kubernetes cluster or whatever situation you have going on, then maybe adding a log statement and doing a release so that when you turn on debug logging you get that information in a different way may be the better solution in your case. I'm not saying Postman is the answer to everything, there's no silver bullet. What tools or methods you use depends highly on which software components you have. If you have large scale software components like a service calling a REST API then maybe a network inspector is a good idea. But if you have small scale software components which you're trying to debug like this class calling this other function or method in this other module or class then maybe a log statement is enough. It really depends on what you're working with here. But when you're dealing with 
classes calling each other or functions calling each other, that's usually a lot quicker and a lot easier to debug because you can just write unit tests for it or you can just add some log statements or run the live debugger and inspect the data that's going from function to function. The important insight here is that if you don't know how to inspect the communication, the boundary between two software components, you must learn how to do it. This may involve learning a new skill, learning a new part of a language or learning a new tool. This may involve installing a new tool. This may involve updating the software that you write. Maybe you need to write some code to be able to inspect it better because right now it is not inspectable. Really, whatever you need to inspect this problem right here, because if you skip this intersection, this boundary of components, and you move on to the next one on the list, then you're probably going to end up running in circles around the problem. Part three, an example. Let's say your software stack has four high level components. You have a front end, a back end for front end, a service, and a database. All of them call each other in a certain way. The initiative usually lies with the front end if the user initiates an action. All these software components, of course, contain their own subcomponents. The front end is not just the front end, that is a React application with maybe tens or hundreds of components in there, React components in there. The service maybe, or the BFF, maybe a Node.js application that contains multiple folders, all of them which has multiple modules, all of them which has multiple functions. That's okay, right now we're looking at the high level first, and then we're going to zoom in. As a first step, you test the connection points, you test the boundaries. You start on one end, you can start on the front end, and you can start on the database end. That's also fine. Uh, maybe it makes more sense depending on what kind of bug uh, you're dealing with, uh, but it remains a guess on what end you start. Let's assume you start on the front end, you would inspect the traffic that goes from front end to BFF. This would literally mean looking at the HTTP request, looking at the HTTP response from a data and a metadata perspective. The data perspective is maybe there's JSON that you send across the line or that you request across the line. Let's, let's inspect what's going on there. Does the data itself make, make sense? Do the numbers make sense? Do the strings make sense? Do the types make sense? Does the structure make sense? Maybe there's nested objects with arrays with objects again. Does all of that hierarchy make sense? And then from the metadata perspective, are there authentication headers in the HTTP uh, header section? Do they make sense? Is the request usually slow or unusually quick? Uh, either the request or the response it goes for both. Is there actually a layer in between via a I don't know, a proxy, maybe you're uh, running in a cloud and you, uh, you're dealing with uh, some kind of load balancer that, that could be in the middle there that, that is slowing or uh, speeding up your traffic in, in a weird way. That might be a high level component as well, as well that's missing from this. We're avoiding looking at the internals of either the front end or the BFF. If everything looks fine, we're moving to the next one, the boundary between the BFF and the service. Once you have found the offender, the offending communication, you can start to zoom in. Maybe when you looked at front end to BFF, the communication, the request and the response was fine. Maybe when you looked at the BFF to the service, the request was fine, but the response didn't make sense. So you know, I need to start looking at the internals of the service. I need to start looking, zooming into that point. I can for now forget the database, the BFF and the front end. I'm going to look at the service. And once you start to zoom in, you can use the same approach again. Every large scale software component consists of sub components. Again, in the servers, there may be a middleware layer, there may be controllers, there may be other components out there. It's usually files like modules or classes contained in a folder together. You have a certain project structure. Those are the subcomponents. When you start looking at this middleware layer, they consist of multiple filters and maybe the data flows inside into this service from, from outside of the service, always via the middleware layer. There's no way around the middleware layer. Okay, let's start there. We follow the data again. And again, right here, we focus on the boundaries. So if we have the middleware and the controller, we can inspect the communication between the middleware and the controller, but we're not going to zoom in to the middleware or the controller itself. So if the middleware is a function that calls a controller function or there is some framework function that calls it, let's add a log statement there. Let's not look at the controller and the middleware itself. Let's look at the data that's being passed from the middleware to the controller. Does that timing make sense? Does the structure of the data, do the values make sense? If they do, the problem is probably not in the middleware, but 
either in the controller or downstream from the controller. So this means looking at the function call, the arguments, the data, the structures, the types. Maybe you want to add log statements, maybe you want to fire up a live debugger if you can easily produce a problem locally. And at some point you are at the lowest level, then you can oversee the problem. It's just one class or one function and you know it's somewhere in here, it has to be somewhere in here. Then you can start adding even more log statements or fire up your live debugger, add tests via TDD, see what happens. Um, make sure the moment you have found a problem, you add a test and then you fix the problem so that the problem in the future is not going to reappear because you've guarded for it. To summarize, debug systemically, methodically. Teach yourself this way of thinking and it will help you your entire career. Focusing on the boundaries between software components will speed you up. This goes for APIs and services and network boundaries, but it also goes for functions and classes, simple as arguments and function calls. This further teaches you to focus on the interfaces and the boundaries of things, which is very important in software engineering. I've talked about this many times before. Maybe you want to check out my video on interface thinking. And as a bonus, this way of working can even help you find bugs in code that you don't own, like an external API. It's hosted somewhere else or it's closed source because you're inspecting the network traffic, you're inspecting the contract. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. I'd like to hear from you in the comments. What's your experience with finding very difficult to find bugs? Please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.